What is going on, RP fam? Thank you guys so much for taking some time out of your busy day to join me for another video. It is week 17, which means we have made it to the pinnacle. It is championship week. Every decision we make is critical. My job today is going to try to bring you the best information to help you make the greatest decisions, go out and get a win, and bring home the title. In today's video, I'm going over the top 25 options at quarterback. That means for those in two quarterback and super flex leagues, I got you covered. I also have the top 15 kicker options. Guys, I think are going to have opportunities to put points on the board for their teams and yours as well. If you are new to the channel, thank you for joining us today. Please consider dropping a like on the video if you enjoy the content and subscribing to the channel helps so very much. We are on our way to our first 1,000 subscribers. You can be a part of that by clicking that button for me. And with that done, let's hop into week 17's quarterback rankings. The top of my list is Patrick Mahomes. He's thrown three touchdown passes in three straight games, and he faces a Broncos defense that just got embarrassed by Baker Mayfield and the Rams. Denver allows the 10th most passing yards per game over their last three, and Patty is going to continue his surge and rack up points with ease. At number two, it is Justin Fields. He travels to Detroit. He absolutely face planted in a big game last week for owners. But if you were able to survive his quarterback 25 finish last week, I am jumping back in with both feet and believing that he bounces back against Detroit. No one allows more points per game to the position, and we cannot just go and forget the eight straight top eight finishes that Fields had prior to the game against the Bills. In at number three is Joe Burrow. He has seven touchdown passes and 575 yards through the air in his last two games. Each of those were top six finishes, and they were both against good defenses. As an owner, I am not fearing any matchup with Cool Joe. He has the Bengals looking like a top three team in the AFC. At number four, and at the top of tier number two, I have Josh Allen in that matchup. He has not looked great in two out of his last three games, but he continues to rack up fantasy points. He's been a top 10 finisher in three straight. Now the Bengals have been a top eight team against quarterbacks, both in talking about passer rating allowed and points per game allowed to the position. However, I think Allen is able to overcome both of those stats in what could be a shootout for one of the top two seeds in the AFC. In at number five, I have Dak Prescott. He faces Tennessee. He bounced back from that hilarious pick six early in the game to post the overall QB one finish in week 16. He racked up 388 total yards of offense and three scores against Philadelphia. With three touchdowns in three out of his last four games and a juicy matchup on deck with Tennessee, Prescott is primed to help carry you to a championship. My sixth ranked quarterback on the week is Jared Goff. He has dominated plus matchups for most of the year and he is on fire in his last four. He's posted three top four finishes in them. The Bears are allowing the eighth most points per game to the position, so I expect another monster game from the Godfather. Kicking off tier number three and in at seven is Kirk Cousins. He's been nowhere to be seen over the last three games. It has been all Kirko chains all the time with three straight top six finishes. The pack was getting lit up in the first half before they concussed Tua, and then they took advantage of him seeing stars in the second half, so I am not worried about this matchup. Plus, we know that Chains is fearless too. At the eighth spot is Trevor Lawrence. He posted his third straight top 10 finish, using his legs to carry the Jags to a big victory on Thursday night. Houston has been a tough team on the position all year long, but Lawrence just dominated two straight games under similar circumstances. So I am rolling with him and the momentum that he has here. Lawrence is a quarterback one without a doubt. At number nine is Aaron Rodgers in that big matchup with Minnesota. He has not posted a top 10 finish since way back in week number 10, but this is the Viking secondary that we are talking about. Minnesota allows top five points per game to the position on the year, and with Green Bay still needing a few wins to make that playoff spot, Rodgers is gonna go off at home. I have seen this story too many times to think anything else will happen. 
to round out my top 10, it is Brock Purdy all the way up there. He travels to Vegas. Am I crazy to have Mr. Irrelevant in the top 10 with your season on the line? Yes, probably, but that does not make me wrong. Purdy has posted point totals of 15, 22, 16, and 17 in his four starts this year. That solid floor combined with an epic matchup with Vegas means you can have your cake and eat it too. Do not start the name, start the production. At number 11, tumbling down a bit, starting tier four, I have Justin Herbert. He is likely not on many rosters that are still fighting for a title after back-to-back -back finishes outside the top 24. But if you're in the minority here and you're still in it mad props to you herbie cannot possibly be a top 10 play against a ram team that is top 10 in basically every category anti-quarterback but even with his struggles i find it hard to get many options above him here the upside remains there at number 12, the last quarterback one I have in week 17, it is Gardner Minshew. He came out of nowhere last week to post a top five finish against a strong Dallas defense. So even though these Saints that he faces have crushed quarterbacks all season long, you have to have confidence in the system and the surroundings. Minshew is not the most talented backup in the league, but he is pretty close to it. And he has one of the best group of healthy playmakers to help take the pressure off him as well. My lucky number 13 is Daniel Jones. He's a top 10 quarterback on the season, believe it or not. And judging by his roster percentages, most of you do not. But that does not mean that it is too late to allow Jones to put up numbers for you. Danny Dimes has been a top 12 play in three out of the last four weeks, and Indy has been kind of the position all year long. They allow a 95.4% passer rating, which is seventh highest in the NFL. My 14th ranked quarterback is Mike White. He travels to Seattle. He may be a little bit too late for the Jets here, but he is just in time to help carry gutsy owners. White is an erratic play, but the ceiling against Seattle puts him in the top seven. The Hawks are allowing a 103.6 passer rating over their last three games and well over 17 points a game to the position on the season. White has the skill set to put up a big day with this matchup. In at 15 and headlining tier number five is Tom Brady. He will bring a solid floor to the table for you, but that is just about it. Brady has one top 10 finish since back in week five, and he was the quarterback 21 in week seven when these two teams met up. Once again, you are buying the volume here and hoping for his second multi-touchdown performance in his last three games. Geno Smith is my sweet 16. He has not gotten inside the top 15 since back in week 14, and I think that he fails to reach that once more in a bottom 10 matchup with the Jets. New York has held quarterback to the second lowest passer rating this season, and with Geno floundering as of late, I do not have the confidence that he can overcome an elite secondary. Deshaun Watson is up at 17. He gets Washington on the road. He still hasn't accounted for more than a single touchdown in the four tries he's had thus far, but he might get it a little easier here against the Commanders. With solid options dwindling, you are banking on the talent that we have not seen thus far, and you could certainly certainly make worse bets than that. Tier 6 starts with Derek Carr. He gets a matchup with San Francisco. He has been impossible to predict over the last two weeks. He dominated in a tough matchup against New England and then fell flat on his face in a great matchup with the Steelers. That history suggests that he could hit here against the league's best defense, but I would not be testing that theory if I can all avoid it. With four touchdowns and six picks in his last three games, the gamble takes some bravery and a lot of luck as well. To 19, Sam Darnold sits there. He definitely deserves more respect than this. After posting a top eight performance last week against Detroit, it was his fourth straight in the top 20. I think that he can get there again against the Bucs but the ceiling shrinks considerably against anyone not the Lions. At 20, it is Russell Wilson. He travels to Kansas City. He probably offers some garbage time goodness against the Chiefs here, and that is all that you can hope for if you 
are forced to start him. Wilson has been the biggest disappointment in all of fantasy football, so it would not surprise me if he isn't just the Bronco who stole Christmas, but he also ruins New Year's for you as well. At the top of tier seven and in at 21, it is Tyler Huntley. He has not thrown for over 138 yards since his season debut against Denver, and he has just 72 rushing yards in his last three games as well. The Steelers have allowed just 141 passing yards per game over their last three. That is second fewest in the league. So there is clearly not a lot to love this deep in my rankings. Next up, it is Baker Mayfield. He remains a hot, cold option with finishes of QB 16, 29, and then 12 in the last three weeks. The Chargers have allowed the lowest passer rating in the league over the last three games. So Mayfield will have plenty to overcome to produce. At 23, it is Kenny Pickett. He has back-to-back -back finishes in the top 20 if you throw out the game that he got injured in. So there is definitely a reason to hope that he puts up a decent performance against the Ravens. If you are looking for nothing but floor, Pickett is probably your best option if you are shopping outside of the top 20. In my eighth and final tier at 24 is Mac Jones. He got plenty of garbage time help after going down 22 to nothing against the Bengals before actually making a game of it at the end, but I do not expect the same thing to happen here against Miami. Jones has not gotten inside the top 23 in three straight prior to the Cincy game last week. And two of those games were smash matchups. So we have little reason to have faith in Jones. The last quarterback I'm looking at is Davis Mills. He gets a top six matchup with the Jags to exploit. And that's probably the only positive about starting him this week. If you are looking to throw a dart with upside, he did just post a top 12 finish against Kansas City back in week 15. But be aware that the floor is dangerously low. A couple quarterbacks who just missed the cut include Teddy Bridgewater filling in for an injured, once again, Tua Tungovailoa, and Desmond Ritter at home against Arizona. Before I get into my kickers, great time to remind you guys to hit the like button if you're enjoying the content, and then please be aware, I also update my rankings from every single position on Saturdays. If you have five extra minutes over the weekend, you can get my thoughts as things change during the middle of the week as we continue to hear more news. Please make sure to drop any questions, any comments that you have down below. I love to be able to get back to you and help answer your questions. And I can't do that if there is nothing there. And with that done, let's get in to kickers. My number one option in week 17 is Harrison Butker. He should see plenty of kicking opportunities against a Broncos team that just gave up a 50 burger against the lowly Rams. Denver is also allowing 11 points per game to the position on the season. That is second most in the league. At number two, it is Tyler Bass traveling to Cincinnati. And then at three, I have Brett Maher behind that awesome Cowboys offense. He travels to Tennessee. Graham Gano is in the four spot. He's at home against Indianapolis. And the lead off tier number two, it is Cameron Dicker to round out my top five. He's hit two or more field goals in six out of his last eight games. And the Rams are surrendering the fourth most points to kickers on the season. With Justin Herbert struggling to find the end zone, Dicker should see plenty of opportunities and capitalize on them. At number six, it is Greg the Leg Joseph on the road against Green Bay. And at seven, it is Robbie Gold traveling to Vegas. Mason Crosby in that home matchup with my Vikings is my eighth ranked kicker. And at nine and headlining tier number three, I have Riley Patterson traveling to Houston. I think he's probably the most underrated kicker in fantasy right now. He's been a top eight play in three straight games and two of those finishes were within the top four. Quick hot take for you, the Texans are not good at football, and with Jacksonville looking to win the division, they're going to put up plenty of points against Houston. Rounding out my top 10 is Evan McPherson at home against Buffalo in probably the game of the week, and at 11 I have Jake Elliott at home against New Orleans. My fourth and final tier starts with Young Way Koo at home against Arizona. He was a top 12 play last week against the Ravens, and I think he gets there again in a great matchup with the nose-diving Cardinals. Atlanta should be able to move the ball with ease on the ground. They match up really well, so I think Koo gets at least a few chances to put three on the board. 
at 13, it is Michael Bagley at home against Chicago. 14 is Nick Folk. He gets a matchup with Miami. And the last kicker I have down at 15 is Greg Zerline traveling to Seattle couple of guys who just missed the cut are Daniel Carlson at home. Tough matchup with San Francisco. Jason Sanders traveling to New England. I like that offense a heck of a lot less with Teddy Bridgewater at the helm. And Jason Myers at home against the Jets. And that'll do it for today's video. Really hope you guys learned something from it. Let me know what you thought about the rankings and drop your comments and your questions down below. Love to hear from you guys. The feedback is very appreciated. Reminder that Relentless Press drops content Monday to Saturday. I do over 10 videos every single week. And once the fantasy season is over, the content does not stop. I will be doing game reviews and plenty of other videos covering the NFL landscape. So make sure you check back in often so you do not miss anything. That being said, like the video and subscribe to the channel so you you get all of that goodness. This is Relentless Press. I am your host, Abraham Opatz, and I will see you next time.